All right. All right. Inside out. How you guys doing tonight? Okay, that awesome. I love it, y'all. That's great, y'all. Well, hey, my name is Matt Keeney, and I'm truly, I'm really excited to be up here with you guys continuing the series that we've been in called Rhythm. And I just am so happy to be here back at Inside Out because Inside Out has been my home for a very long time. I started coming to Inside Out when I was a sophomore, and I went to Vista Ridge. Anybody uh, go to Vista Ridge in here? Put the guns up. I'm not biased, but guns up. I, I love Vista Ridge. I love everything about it right there. Come to Inside Out when I was going to Vista Ridge, and uh, this is when Inside Out wasn't even in this building. Uh, we were at the uh, uh, Cedar Park Rec Center, and we were in this tiny room, and there was about 20 people there. Um, and I just knew from the moment I walked in, I was like, man, free food, I'm there. I love everything about Inside Out. So I started coming week after week after that. Um, and when I graduated from high school, I never stopped coming because I started volunteering here at Inside Out back in the production. Can we give a quick shout out to our production team? They truly are some of the greatest people in the entire world. Started serving here in production and then I started hosting and communicating sometimes uh, here at Inside Out and I absolutely love what I get to do. And more recently, I actually got hired here on staff at North Point. And what I recently get to do is I get to be our transit director, which is our middle school environment here. Uh, we got any transit volunteers in here? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love what I get to do. It's our middle school environment here at North Point, and I absolutely love what I get to do. It happens Sunday mornings back through these walls uh, in the garage area. Um, and I love what I get to do because I think middle schoolers are some of the coolest people in the entire world. And you guys may be sitting there, well, like, I've got a little brother. I've got a little sister who are, like, not cool at all. But personally, for me, I think middle schoolers are incredibly cool because they teach me a ton of things. Like, for, uh, for example, like a couple weeks ago, they taught me what this thing is um, right up here. They taught me what TikTok was. Was. We got any like big TikTokers in here? Some of you guys, some of you guys right there. I had no idea what TikTok was at all, um, and nothing against TikTok, but I come from the original Vine days. How many of you guys like Vine better than TikTok? There we go. Not to just like divide the room or anything like that, but I come from the Vine days, and I like Vine better than TikTok a little bit. Uh, middle schoolers are incredibly cool. All of them are taller than me, which probably doesn't come as a, at a shock to you guys. I'm not even joking. There's literally like a 12-year-old who's like 6'2", which is just stupid because I'm like, I'm 21 years old, and I'm waiting for my growth spurt to like finally happen. I don't think it's going to happen this year at all, but how tall am I? I don't know, like five, six. I don't know. I said, she laughs. She laughs. Wow. All right, so that's how it's going to go tonight. All right. I like that a lot. But uh, yeah, chill. All right. No, I, I personally believe, I personally believe middle schoolers are some of the coolest people in the entire world. Definitely cooler than I ever was in middle school. I tried to be the cool kid. I tried to fit in in middle school. I even tried out for the football team in middle school. This is a young Odell in his prime right here. Hawks up. Young Odell in his prime. And as you guys can see from this picture, the pads were absolutely way too big. And I was about three foot ten in middle school, okay? And so I tried out for the football team. And since you can't cut people in middle school, it's just like a rule, I guess. Since you can't cut people from a team, what the coaches did is they took me and about 20 other small, out of shape people, and they put us on the first ever Henry Hawk C team. Not A team, not B team. They put us on the first ever C team, which I just feel like I'm a part of history. That's just a, I'm just a part of history. I, t I wear that with pride on my sleeve right there. I, I absolutely love that um, right there. And like every middle school now takes like really great pictures with like the filters and hashtags. I had none of that when I was in middle school. I actually tried finding like a really good picture to show you guys from middle school. And I honestly couldn't find like a great picture I took in middle school. So what I did for you guys specifically is I brought my most embarrassing uh, middle school school picture. And uh, before we show it, I know my dad is probably embarrassed that this pic e even like exists um, because of it, how it is. But like, this is me in sixth grade right here. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yes, that's me in sixth grade. I know. You guys are right to laugh. You are right to laugh. You guys are laughing a little too hard. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this was me in sixth grade. Everybody takes better pictures now. Anyways, I, I absolutely love what I get to do here at North Point. I love being our transit director. I love hanging out with middle schoolers right here. And honestly, what I love to get to do is I love to get, get to come back home here to Inside Out, and I love to get to communicate with you guys. And I'm really excited about what we're talking about tonight for part three of this series that we've been in called... For the past two weeks, what we've been looking at is we've been looking at the different rhythms in our life on how we connect with the people 
that we are around. Because what's true about every single person in here is we're all designed for connection. We all want to be connected with the people that we're around. But tonight, what I want to do for our conversation tonight is I just want to ask a question that maybe you guys are personally experiencing right now or you guys have experienced in the past. But in the last two weeks, we looked at how we create rhythm with people. But tonight, what I want to do is I want to ask the question of what breaks our rhythm. What breaks our rhythm with the people that we're around? What breaks our rhythm with our family? What breaks our rhythm with our friends? What breaks our rhythm with the people that we are closest to? I don't, know, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but for me personally, I feel like my life is like an up and down rhythm. Like some days I feel like, man, I feel so connected. Look at my group of friends. I feel awesome. I feel super connected to the people that I'm around. And then other days my phone is like dry, like Savannah desert dry, like not even an email all day. And I'm like, what happened to that connection? What happened to that rhythm? What happened to everything that I just had? What happened to that rhythm? It's because by nature, this is just who I am, and maybe you guys can relate to this too. By nature, I want to be wanted by people. By nature, I want to be wanted by people. Maybe you guys experience this too, but when I don't feel that connection, when I don't feel wanted by people, something stirs up inside of me, and it maybe stirs up inside of you as well. This thing that stirs up inside of each and every single one of us has the potential to rob us of any rhythm that we're trying to create with other people. What we're talking about tonight has the potential to rob us of our ability to connect with the people that we're around, which is no good because like I said before, each and every single one of us in here is designed for connection. And the thing I wanna talk about tonight is something called fear, fear. Not necessarily the emotion of fear, because that would be super broad, and I'm not talking about spiders or snakes, and you may judge me for this, but I'm being vulnerable tonight. Uh, I'm afraid of ladybugs. I don't like ladybugs at all, because anything that crawls and flies deserves to die. Honestly, I hate ladybugs so much. And I'm not talking about fear or what, what we're afraid of. We just passed Halloween and whatnot. But more specifically, y'all bring it back in. More specifically, what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown right up here. Okay? The fear of the unknown has the potential to rob us of the ability to connect with the people that we're around. A lot of times the fear of the unknown could be all the scenarios, all the questions that we just don't have the answers to, and it could cause this anxiety, it could cause this stress, it can cause this fear in our lives. The fear of the unknown could be like if you're an athlete, or if you're, if you're a cheerleader, if you're a dancer, whatever it may be, you could have the fear the unknown because you don't know how you're going to perform that night before the game, before, before the performance or whatever it may be. And so this anxiety can stir up inside of you because you just don't know how it's going to go, right? The fear of the unknown could be like, okay, if you're a senior in here and you don't know where you're going to college next year, this can cause an anxiety. This can cause a stress within you. And that's the unknown. These are all the scenarios that we just don't know about. A lot of times the fear of the unknown has to do with how we're being perceived by people, right? We could walk through school tomorrow and we could ask these questions, these scenarios that we just don't have the answers to. Like, what is this person really thinking about me? Does this person on the other side of me like really like me? Are they judging me for some reason? If I do this thing, will they judge me? If I say this one thing, will they judge me? Those are all the unknowns. These are all the scenarios that we can play in our head and it robs us of something. Like I said before, the fear of the unknown can rob us of our ability to connect with people. Because this is true for me too. When I'm hanging out with like my best friends, like my bros, I love them a lot. When I'm hanging out with my best friends, I could be so worried and so concerned and this anxiety and stress can uh, build up inside of me. I could be so worried about how they're perceiving me if I'm being liked by them that I forget to connect with them, that I forget to have a rhythm with them. The fear of the unknown blocks what we talked about last week, which is vulnerability. Vulnerability. Klein was up here last week. She talked about this idea of vulnerability. Being vulnerable with someone on the other side of you, is that a best friend? Is that a parent? Whoever it may be. Being vulnerable with the person on the other side of you takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of trust with that person, right? Being vulnerable is saying, I'm going to let down all my walls. I'm going to be 100% authentic with you. But the fear of the unknown blocks our ability to be vulnerable because I could try to be vulnerable with you. But what if you take my information? What if you take something that I'm really dealing with, something that's heavy? What if you take it and go tell somebody else? What if you take it and go tell, you know, post it somewhere or tell somebody else? Then that blocks my ability to ever trust you 
again. So what we do is we decide to not be authentic. We decide to not be vulnerable. Vulnerable. We put back up our walls and we decide to not be authentic with people because we're worried about the unknown. We're worried about if they take that information somewhere else. What the fear of the unknown does, think about it this way, okay? Imagine this marble jar right here is you, okay? You are said marbles, okay? Say hi to yourself, right? Okay, these are, this is you right here living your most full and connected life. You feel like you have great rhythms with the people that you're around. But see, this right here is all the fears. These are all the things that we don't know about, all the scenarios that we don't know about. So if you're an athlete, right, how am I going to perform at my game? What that does is it takes something from us. It's robbing us of something, right? If you are, you know, if you're at school and you took a test and you don't know how you did, that's an unknown and it's robbing us of something, okay? Now we're not having rhythm with the people that we're around, right? If, you, if you're not being vulnerable, if you're worried about what other people may do, if you feel disconnected from someone, this is what happens when we have the fear of the unknown. And we look back in our life when we have these fears, when we have these stresses, when we have these anxieties, and we look back at ourselves, and now we are empty. We're not living our most full. We're not living our most connected life. When we play into these fears, when we play into the anxiety that the fear of the unknown can bring in our lives. So the question that I want to ask for the rest of our time tonight is how do we recapture our rhythm? If the fear of the unknown is true, if we are afraid of a lot of things, the fear of the un unknown is true, how do we recapture our rhythm with people? How do we make sure we go through life making, making sure we are living the most full and connected life? Maybe you're in here today and like an easy answer to that is just be happier, right? Surround yourself with happier people, put yourself in happier places, and you're not going to be able to be afraid of anything, right? No need to fear if you're happy, you're in the clear, Right? The problem with this is that the fear of the unknown doesn't go away when we're just happy. Follow me along here. We got any Taco Bell fans in here? Like people who really like Taco Bell? Yeah, you guys are going to get this, okay? So I love Taco Bell. I could eat Taco Bell almost every day. Probably not, but I could almost eat Taco Bell every day. Imagine I'm happy and I'm thrilled that I'm eating Taco Bell. I'm excited about it and I've got my five layer burrito in front of me. I could be happy about this, but it doesn't help with the fear of the unknown because while I'm happy eating this burrito, I could be worried about what it's doing to me later. Do you guys pick up what I'm throwing down, right? That's what that could do. It doesn't get rid of the fear of the unknown. That was a silly example, whatever. But happiness is all external. Happiness is all based on external circumstances, right? Naveen Ritchie, who's a professor at the University of North Carolina at Wilmington, she says it this way. She says happiness is fickle. It's quick, okay? It requires happy circumstances, which is everything that we just talked about, right? If you're happy, you're placed in a happy circumstance, but it doesn't help with this fear of the unknown, all the scenarios that we just don't know about. But then she gives us an answer to how we solve this fear of the unknown. She gives us an answer on how we combat this fear of the unknown, and it's absolutely incredible what she says. She says this, happiness is fickle and requires happy circumstances, but joy, joy on the other hand, sticks around, and it doesn't get chased off by trouble. See, what she's saying is that joy doesn't get chased off by trouble. Joy is the solution to the fear of the unknown. Joy is not external. Joy is all internal. And she's saying it doesn't get chased off by trouble, which we've learned tonight that the fear of the unknown, the fear of the circumstances that we just don't have the answer to can cause this stress, can cause this anxiety that we have in our life. She's saying joy is that answer. And then she says something that I think if we got this right tonight, it has the ability to change everything for our life. It has the ability to make sure we're living life to our fullest, being the most connected and having the most rhythms for our life. She brings this God element into this, and here's what she says. She says, in the English Standard Version of the Bible, the words joy, rejoice, and joyful appear a total of 430 times, compared with happy or happiness, which appear only 10 times. Joy is lasting, and it satisfies the heart in a unique and marvelous way. And joy is a characteristic of God's people found in his presence. And this is something so fascinating. I don't want you guys to miss this. This is what she says next. As Pastor Colin says, Christian joy flows from realizing our position in Christ, who you are in him, what he has done for you. Maybe you're in here tonight and you're, you, this is your first time today or you're not really sure where you stand with God. You're like, I, I don't know if I believe in God. I, I have questions. I have doubts. I, that's totally okay. I'm just happy that you guys are here tonight. But as what we believe as Christians is not only is God real, but God is 
personal and desires a personal relationship with each and every single one of us. So much so that it states that we're created in his image. We're created in the image of God. And so much so he desires that personal relationship with us. So much so that it states that we are his sons. And we are his daughters. But see, there's something in life that breaks our rhythm with God. If God really wants to be connected with us, if God really wants a rhythm with us, there's something in our life that disconnects our rhythm with God. And very simply put, that thing that disconnects our rhythm is something called sin. And whether you're a Christian here, in here tonight or you, you wouldn't put, cross that line of faith or whatever it may be, it, we, I'm sure we've all heard that term before of sin. And simply put, it's just anything that's harmful towards ourselves, others, or our relationship with God. Maybe sin is the thing that we're ashamed of. Maybe sin is the thing that disconnects us from people, dis disconnects our rhythm from people, can also disconnect our relationship with God. But here's so important, and I don't want anybody to miss this in here. God does not want to be disconnected with you. God wants a rhythm with you so much so that not only are we his sons and daughters, and that's our position in him, but so much so that he sent his perfect son, Jesus, into the world, to live a perfect life, to live a life that you and I can, and to take the punish punishment of our sins firsthand on the cross. That's what Jesus did for us, right? Because if sin disconnects, Christ reconnects. If sin disconnects our rhythm with God, Christ came into the world to reconnect our relationship with God. And Christ came into the world, world to drive out our fear. All of the fear of the unknown that you and I don't know about, all of the fear of the unknown, those scenarios that you and I don't know about, Christ came into the world to drive that out. Fear is the complete opposite of why Jesus came into the world. It says throughout the New Testament that there's about seven things Jesus specifically tells us not to do. And these seven things are incredibly important. And one of those is don't fear. Because what Jesus knew and what a lot of his disciples and what a lot of his followers knew is that it was the complete opposite of why he was in the world. John, one of the closest disciples, one of the closest followers of Jesus puts it this way. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. God's perfect love for you, God's perfect love for you drives out any fear of the unknown that you don't know about. All the things that cause you anxiety, all the things that cause you stress, Jesus came into the world to take the punishment of that. So not only can you reconnect your rhythm with God, but when you reconnect your rhythm with God, it makes it so much easier to connect with the people you're around. I put it this way, we can regain our rhythm with people by finding joy through God. When we find joy in the fact that we are his sons, when we find joy in the fact that we are his daughters and that Christ paid it all for us to know that we are accepted by him, it makes all the difference in the world. And not only can we be reconnected with God, but we can have a rhythm with the people that we're around. Guys, the reason why I'm so passionate about this, the reason why I love talking about this topic tonight is because there was once a time in my life when I was living an empty life. There was a time in my life where I was constantly terrified of how people perceived me. I wanted to be wanted by people. I wanted to be liked by people. And there was a time in my life where I was constantly terrified of how people were perceiving me, right? And, and growing up, I never really had a perception of who God was. I just thought he was like this good God. I, I just heard he was like this good God who like loved us a lot. But I never felt that personally. I didn't know what a personal relationship with God looked like. I was living an empty life because I was constantly terrified of how I was being perceived by people. I was constantly terrified of being rejected by the people I was around. And there was so many fear of the unknowns that I was dealing with in my life, especially during middle school. Because in middle school, I went to Henry Middle School, as you guys saw. In, in, in middle school, I, I was bullied a lot. I was picked on a lot for my size. I was three foot ten, as I, I told you guys in middle school. And I couldn't talk very well. I, I, I wasn't the smartest in the class. And, and I just felt like this easy target from the people I was around. There was like, everybody was bigger than me and, and I would get bullied a lot for who I was and I would get rejected for who I was. I would get physically beaten up almost every day for just being me, for just trying to be accepted by the people I was around. And that terrified me of how I was being perceived by people because I wanted to be liked. I didn't want to be beaten up every single day for who I was. And I would get beaten up every single day and I would kind of have this perception of God of like, well, I don't want to know and I don't want to discover what this relationship with God looks like because if this is how it is, I don't want that at all. 
And there was a time in my life where I disconnected my rhythm with God because there was a day in seventh grade where I got beaten up, I got punched, and these two guys threw, threw me into this itty-bitty locker in middle school. And if you guys walk the halls in middle school, you know how tiny those things are. They'd stuff me in, those, in that locker. And in that moment, I was like, God, I don't know if you're real. I don't know if you're real, but if you are real, then why is this happening to me? If you're real and you love me, then why is this happening to me? God, I'm done with you. God, I hate you. I want nothing to do with you. Because if you love me, then this is not the love that I want. And from that day forward, I, I moved away from God. I disconnected from my relationship with God or whatever that was at that time. And I disconnected from people. Because that next year in my eighth grade, I, I was homeschooled. I didn't want to be around people anymore. I didn't want to be connected. I didn't want to have any rhythm with people. So in eighth grade, I decided to be homeschooled. And I decided to go back to Vista Ridge. I decided to go back to public school for my ninth grade year for one reason and one reason only. I just wanted to be on the baseball team. I, I didn't want anything to do with my past. I didn't want to be labeled by who I was anymore. And so I, I came to Vista Ridge that first day, and I realized that I had no rhythms, no connectedness with anybody, and then lunch, lunchtime came around, and I had nobody to sit with. And if you've been to Vista, you know how big that courtyard is, and I sat down in the courtyard. I was looking at everybody else making connections. I was looking at everybody, everybody else having rhythms, and again, that terrifying thought of how empty I was being terrified of how I was being perceived, because I thought I was being perceived as that loser who just sat alone at lunch, and I was afraid and I was worried, and all these fear of the unknowns just kept boiling up inside of me, and my anxiety, my stress just kept boiling up and boiling up. And then in a moment, everything changed. In a moment, everything changed in my life. Because the guy who invited me here to Inside Out, my best friend at the time, that day, my first day of high school, taps me on the shoulder and says, hey, why don't you come sit with me and my friends at lunch? And slowly, the fear started to go away. Slowly, the fear started to go away. Because not only did I find a connection and find a rhythm with, the, with that guy right there, but not, he invited me to be with his friends. And I started gaining connections and I started gaining rhythm with people. And then he invited me about a year later to this place, to Inside Out, where I realized for the first time in my life, not only is God real, but God desires a personal relationship with me. God calls me his son. He calls me beloved. So much so that he sent his perfect son into the world for my mistakes, for my shortcomings, for my sin, and that I could find immense joy in realizing that I was a son of God and realizing I could find immense joy in knowing the fact that Christ paid it all for me to know that I was accepted for once. And that's what I found and discovered here and Inside Out. I realized that I was letting other people's perception of me, I was letting other people's view of me, I was letting other people's sin decide my rhythm with God, decide my connection with God. But when I placed my, my, my trust and faith in, in who God was and my position in him and what Christ has done for me, I realized that not only could I be connected with God, but it made, me, it made it so much easier to connect with the people that I was around. And I realized that I could find joy in who I was. And what's amazing about our Heavenly Father, he's, he didn't extend that invite just to me that day, but he extends that invite to every single one of us saying, hey, don't don't let the fear of the unknown rob you of the joy that I can supply in your life. Because here's what's true. If we went back to our marbles, what Jesus did for us, he came into the world. He drove out fear, which means all the fears that we had are gone when we place our trust in Jesus. And with God, knowing our position in him, knowing that we are loved, knowing that we are his sons, knowing that we are his daughters. Here's the joy that you guys can experience knowing that and if you're OCD, you're gonna hate me for this because I'm about to make a mess. But this is what's true about our God. When we realize our position in him and knowing everything Christ paid for us, this is the amount of joy that we can receive in our life. Right there. Look at that. They're everywhere. Thank you, God. <laughs> but guys, what's so important and what I don't want you guys to miss is God is extending an invite to you to say, hey, don't let that fear rob you of the ability of the love that I can show you. You are my son and you are my daughter and Christ came into the world for me to show you that with me you are accepted, 
and you are loved, and that nothing defines you. Your fear doesn't define you. That's not who you are. You are a son and daughter, and he loves you more and accepts you more than you could ever hope or you could ever imagine. And when you realize that you could find joy in your position in Christ and reconnect your rhythm with who God is, it makes it so much easier to reconnect our rhythm with the people that we're around. And guys, my bottom line tonight, don't, don't miss this. If you zone me out for 20 minutes, I want you guys to zone right in right here. This is my bottom line, but don't let the fear of the unknown rob you of the joy God can supply you in your life. Because look, it's abundant. It's overwhelming. His love for you, his acceptance of you is more than we could ever comprehend or imagine. And let's not let the fear of the unknown, the things that we can't control, rob us of the life being full by God. Guys, I had a blast tonight. Let me pray for us and then we'll go to those groups. God, thank you for today. Father, thank you for your grace and your love for each and every single one of us. God, thank you for putting a label on us. Thank you for calling us your sons and thank you for calling us your daughters. God, thank you for sending Jesus into the world to drive out our fear, to drive out all the things that we are afraid of, the things that we don't know about. Father, I just, I just thank you for bringing him into the world. God, I, I pray for all of our students, all of our small group leaders this week that we can not let the fear of the unknown rob us of our ability to find joy through you, the joy that you can supply in our lives. God, thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. And it's in his name we pray, amen.